I'm gonna show you how I use Adobe Photoshop to design hardcore death metal style art. What's up guys, in this tutorial I'm gonna walk you through my process for designing savage artwork for the legend Crossbag. I'm just gonna let Tyler take it away and tell you what he's looking for. Hello, my name is Crossbag and I make mediocre videos that do well sometimes. The general theme for this design that I'm looking for is Terminally Online, a spin off of the Chronically Online uh, uh, phrase. I was thinking it could be someone clawing their way out from the inside of a computer screen while the internet is constantly sucking them back in. With the type of biomechanical body horror technology horror type uh, vibe to it. I want it on a white background with a very like crispy high contrast photocopied-esque type harshness to it. I don't really care too much about the specifics as long as it ends up looking good which I think that this design is in good hands. All right, bye. I'm gonna achieve this by using some amazing assets from Infado Elements and Shutterstock, as well as a few tricks along the way. All right, guys, open up Photoshop and let's get cracking. Starting off, I've opened an A3 artboard. It's 3508 by 4961 pixels at 300 dpi. Copy and paste this amazing crossbag logo. I then increase the size of it and put it at the top of the artboard. I then take this nice perspective grid and copy and paste that onto our artboard. Then using our marquee tool, I make a selection of the top couple of squares. Copy and paste it multiple times just to increase its vertical height because we're gonna use this as the background of our image. I then grab the crossbag logo layer and put a small white stroke on the outside just to break it up a little bit from the background after this to build up our composition I use this amazing old-school vintage computer PNG that I got on Envato elements I go into select and click subject and that makes a selection of just the monitor I copy and paste it and drop it on our artboard I duplicate the monitor layer then with magic wand tool holding shift I make multiple clicks on the monitor just to select all of the black parts and on the top layer, I press delete. You'll see why I've done that in a second. After that, I grab this sci-fi looking piston machine thing, make a selection of it and paste it underneath the monitor. Stick it on the right hand side, duplicate it, flip it horizontal and bring the second one over to the right hand side to frame them behind the monitor and start to kind of build up that sci-fi aesthetic. Now taking this badass looking zombie from Neo Stock, I paste it underneath our top layer of the monitor. Then with a hard eraser, I rub out the leg and the bottom part of the zombie. Then holding control and clicking on the thumbnail of the monitor, it makes a nice selection. Then I grab our zombie layer and with a hard eraser, I rub out the bits within the selection of the monitor and then drag the zombie up above so it looks like it's bursting out of the screen and it looks sick already. I then take this other amazing asset from Envato Elements of this old school Commodore 64 looking computer and I just make a selection there of the keyboard. With the marquee tool I make a selection of the bottom. I then copy it, delete my selection and paste it and then bring it up and align it just with the bottom of the keyboard just to reduce the vertical height. I rinse and repeat making a selection with the marquee tool of the top of the keyboard. Once it was looking all right and the perspective was kind of what I wanted, I merge it, copy it, and paste it onto my artboard. Then I go to my trusty Skull 3D model from Invado Elements. Then with Free Transform, which is Control T, I can manipulate the skull and line it above the zombie's head so it fits perfectly. Then with a soft eraser, I just start blending it in nicely to all of this texture on the zombie's head. I then make a new layer beneath the skull, and with a hard brush, I select black and paint in a black mouth to make a dark opening. Use my link in the description for 70% off your first month subscription to Envato Elements. It's honestly the best asset site for all your metal art needs with amazing stock images, 3D models and fonts. Now it's time to do a little bit of photo bashing and I start opening some really cool assets from Shutterstock and Neostock. First up, I take this sick robot asset from Shutterstock and with my polygonal lasso tool, I just start making a selection around the collarbone kind of thing here. I still give my selection a little bit of a refine edge, just smoothing it out a small bit. Once that's done, I copy it and then I paste it onto my artboard. Then I go into edit and into warp and I start dragging it around until it aligns nicely with the body of my zombie. I repeat the same process here, but with the arm, my polygonal lasso tool making a selection. I copy it and paste it and drop it over the left forearm of my zombie again using warp 
to sort of align it where it should naturally be. Then using a soft eraser, blend it into the flesh of the zombie. Then I go to this other amazing asset that I love. It's like a crazy cyborg kind of thing. I use select and subject, copy and paste it to get it off the background. I then go in with my magic wand tool and just select the white parts and press delete. Then with my polygonal lasso tool, I make some selections cutting around all of these pipes, copy and paste it and drop it onto the other side of the zombie's chest. Again, into warp and dragging it until it fits nicely with the body of the zombie. Then pressing control and clicking on the thumbnail of the zombie layer. I'm make a selection of the zombie. Then I right click, click invert selection. Then with a hard eraser, rub out the bits on the outside of the zombie. Furthering that aesthetic, I copy and paste this amazing looking asset from Shutterstock and I drop it underneath the frame of the monitor. This will give the internal parts of the computer that crazy techy sort of Akira looking madness that we love. I then take this amazing cyberpunk looking headdress that I got on Neostock again with my polygonal lasso tool. I make a selection just of the top part I copy my selection, paste it, bring it over the top of the skull. I flip it horizontal and with free transform, I just sort of align it so it fits on top of the head. So I open this sweet cyberpunk style frame that I got on Invado Elements and I put a small stroke on the inside in black. I put it on the bottom left of our airport. I duplicate the layer, rotate it 180 and put the second one on top right of our layer. The first one is this incredible x-ray asset I got on Envato Elements. I copy and paste it and drop it in underneath our frame here. And as you can see, a little bit of the frame was not filled. So I use my marquee tools, make a selection and fill the rest of it with black. I then clean up the edges with our polygonal lasso tool. Crossbag wanted some memes, internet culture and humor in the piece. So of course I had to bring the Doomer in. I really feel this uh, soy jack. I know you guys do too. Then I copy and paste the soy jack and throw them into the top frame. Then playing around, I inverted the black background to white just to see if I could pack a little bit of detail and make them a little bit more interesting within the frames. I got this really cool JPEG of the hearts and likes icons from FreePick. I then copied and pasted a selection with my free lasso tool and dropped it into my artboard. Then for more of that Neuromancer cyberpunk vibe, I went and got this amazing floppy disk asset from Envato Elements. I made a selection of the color, which in this case is yellow, the background. And with that yellow selected, I unlocked the layer and pressed delete. Then with my polygonal lasso tool, I made a selection of a couple of the floppy disks and I copied and pasted them onto my artboard. I'm going to play around with them a bit and see where they suit best. Rinsing and repeating, I made more selections of floppy disks and threw them on the artboard. Then went back to the likes and hearts image and copied out a couple more of them. After that, I put a black and white adjustment layer on the image. This will give us more control of the contrast and the levels within the image itself. Then I take this amazing headdress from Neo Stock with these crazy chaos spikes and with my polygonal lasso tool, I just wanted to take out this sort of jaw piece. Is that what you call it? So I make a rough selection and copy and paste that selection onto my artboard. I drop it over the zombie's jaw and with free transform and warp, I align it so that it fits the jaw of the zombie. I then go into my levels and bring the whites up so it blends more nicely with our figure. I then thought I'd throw a little bit more detail into these frames. So I take this cool image I got on Shutterstock copy out a selection and paste it underneath the frame. I then make a selection of the inside of the frame, copy and paste so that it's just within the boundaries of the frame itself. I then duplicate the layer, bring it down to the bottom frame and rinse and repeat. Now, if you watch my videos, you know that I love this process. This is greebling. We're gonna start putting in loads of extra details to make it look a lot more convincing to the eye of the viewer. In this case, I'm gonna use these amazing cable assets I got on Neostock. And with free transform and warp, I'm gonna start kind of connecting the monitor of the PC with these frames to make it look like it's all connected. These assets are absolutely awesome. I think I spent about 10 quid on them all together and I get so much use out of them. They're so versatile and so handy. To blend them in nicely, I'm just copying and pasting them and dropping them below certain layers and above other layers trying to get a little bit of three-dimensionality into it there's really nothing too strict here but i think you'll agree it adds a lot more dynamism to the whole composition i was pretty happy with how that was looking now so I start going through my layers and putting small inner black strokes on them just to sort of break them up and provide a little bit of separation. Wanting to give the cyberpunk frames a little bit more je ne sais quoi, I open up an amazing tool called Eye Candy 
and I give them a little bit of a liquid chrome. After which I start going through all of my layers, putting white or black strokes on different layers, depending on where they sit on the artboard, and play with my levels to increase contrast and definition as I go. Now going into my skull layer, I open Liquify for my signature move, and that is to elongate the teeth to give them a little bit more of a cartoonish and vicious sort of vibe. This is further playing on the humor that Crustbag wanted in the whole composition, and I just can't help myself when it comes to this. I do, I do it with every skull in every piece that I do. I then continue going through my layers, putting a small black stroke on everything again to give it that illustrated sort of vibe and break up the full composition into defined shapes. It is very important when you make such a chaotic design like this that you allow every element to breathe and give it the correct amount of negative space and contrast so that it punches out really nicely. And that's why our black and white adjustment layer is so valuable. You can see I continue going into my layers and bringing the blacks down and the whites up just to further that contrast. Because when we texture everything together with the Xerox effect, it's gonna really pay dividends because you'll be able to see each individual piece. It's really, really cool in the end. You can also see as I go, I'm nipping and tucking things. I'm increasing sizes of different layers and decreasing other ones. Again, this is to further the impact of the full composition and make sure everything looks balanced and nice together. You will do this all by eye, like there is no actual rules, but you kind of learn the rules first and then break them if you get me. Then to try get a little bit of order in the madness of my mind, I start going through all of my layers and naming them just so it's easier to kind of like edit things and, and kind of think on the fly as I go. Once I cleaned up my artboard, I was much easier able to find out what layers I selected. So I made a selection of all the floppy disks, the heart and like emojis, once I had them all selected, I pressed Control and T and just decreased the size of them a little bit because I thought they were a little bit too overbearing. Now I thought it was time to start adding a little bit more detail to our zombie boys. So I go into this amazing cyborg I got on Shutterstock. With my magic wand tool, I start making selections of the Y parts behind. I then unlock my layer and press delete. After that, I take my polygonal lasso tool and I just start making a rough selection of this shoulder pad. And once I was happy with my selection, I copy and paste it. I laid it over that Y shoulder pad that we had before because I thought there wasn't enough detail in that if you get me. I'm going into edit and warp I just drag it into shape. Following my process I then put an internal black stroke on it to break it up and give it that illustrated drawn sort of feel. I was thinking it was a little too big and clunky so I go into liquify and into the poker tool and I just start decreasing the size of it so it lines a little bit better with our character and finally go into levels and bring the blacks down to give it a little bit more contrast and sandwich it into everything nicely. Now I was pretty happy with the overall composition, so I'm gonna start adding more detail and texture to our image. I opened this incredible zombie death mask pack that I got on Neostock, and I copy and paste out this lovely one here and drop it over the face of our zombie. Continuing on with our Ripper Neostock assets, I go into this amazing zombie wound pack, which has loads of bites and cuts, and I copy and paste a couple of them in and drop them over the body of our zombie. In order to get rid of the overhang, I make a selection of the zombie layer below with right click I select inverse then I select the wound layer again and press delete then playing with some different blend modes I just sandwich it in nicely to the figure below I think this zombie wound pack is just so sick like it makes everything look absolutely amazing now for a little bit more of my signature move I'm going into my blood assets and I'm just sticking them over the top of the monitor here to create a little bit of more disgusting texture I then merge my blood layers together make a selection of the monitor below click invert and delete so it's just over the monitor. I then put our blend mode on multiply to make it look like there's all sorts of disgusting liquid and blood oozing out of the screen as this dude tries climb out. Moving on, I start locking in the sides of our frame here with these awesome futuristic headers I got on Dreadlabs uh, store, but they weren't made by Dreadlabs. Uh, go check out that store anyway. There's good stuff there made by awesome artists. I just clean up the lorem ipsum here with my marquee tool and press delete. I then merge my two headers together. I press control and I to invert. I put a small black stroke internally. I then go back into filter, into eye candy and put the same liquid chrome effect on them. After that I opted to get rid of the internal black stroke and instead put an external white stroke on it to break it up from the nice grid background that we have. I was pretty happy with how that looked and how it broke it up from the whole background so I opted to do the same with these cyberpunk frames putting an external white stroke on them and to be honest I think that works so much nicer. Moving on I go and take this amazing 
amazing asset from Envato Elements, one of the 3D models of a red liquid splash. I then copy and paste it underneath the monitor to make it look like the blood pouring out of the screen is pooling up on the bottom of the composition. To provide further chaos to the background of the image, I go into these organic bioform assets from Ken Coleman, an amazing Irish artist. I copy and paste them and drop them underneath everything but above the grid. Using free transform, I just spin them around until there's sort of a layout that works nicely and makes me happy. Now further playing on the terminally online vibe that Crustbag wanted, I go in and take this cool picture of some HTML code and with my free lasso tool, I make a selection of the code, copy and paste it and drop it underneath my image, but above the frame. I put the blend mode on multiply so you can see the grid coming through the code. And that kind of makes the whole thing a little bit more busy in a nice kind of way. You can see now all I'm doing is copying and pasting the floppy disks and spinning them around with free transform and laying them around the artboard. Again, just to provide more motion and a little bit more chaos, if you get me. This really is by eye. You know, there's no rules here. Uh, you'll just kind of feel it out yourself and once you're happy and you think it looks balanced like move on i then turn off my black and white adjustment layer and i start going through every single layer and making them individually black and white after saving of course i rasterize all of my layer styles and selecting my top layer I start making all of them black and white by pressing Control, Shift, Alt and B and pressing Enter. That'll make them instantly black and white. I rinse and repeat this for every single layer in my artboard. And this is to prepare for my texturing process. Now that everything is black and white, it's time to start abusing our camera raw filter. So we go into filter, click camera raw filter. And what we're gonna do is just go into every single layer and increase the clarity and the texture. It's kind of better to do this layer by layer because sometimes it get too dark or too bright, which you can kind of like play around with dehaze just to make sure you, can, you keep the definition and the detail. But again, this is time consuming, but you just rinse and repeat through every single layer and it'll bring out all of that detail, all of the texture, as well as giving it a nice sort of over the top sort of cartoony look. And it'll pay huge dividends when we go into our Xerox process in the filter gallery later and flatten everything together. You can see on some of these layers, they do go a little bit too dark, even with playing with dehaze. So after I deep fry them with our camera raw filter, all I do is go into levels or curves and bring a little bit more of that detail back. It's quite an easy process, but it's also equally as easy to destroy everything. But don't worry, we got Control Alt Z on our hands. We have the power of the gods here. The only real rule of thumb here in this process is you want each layer in the composition to be equally contrasted and balanced. So it looks like it's the one image, if you get me. It won't look too good if say the armor is like super bright and like low low contrast, whereas like the body of the character is like super dark and gritty and detailed, you know? So just uh, keep an eye on that. And as you go, as I said, play with your levels and you, you'll be sorted by the end of it. I then decided to play up a little bit more in that body horror vibe that Tyler wanted by taken our blood splat layer and put it on the bottom above our grid. I again made that black and white and then copied and pasted it around the artboard using free transform to put it into different positions. That sort of gave the whole thing that natural splat sort of vibe. For a final hurrah, I took these lovely lens flares that I got on Envato Elements and I copied and pasted them onto our artboard. I wanted to give the zombies eyes this like crazy gleam if you get me kind of going overboard with that metal vibe. And hell yeah, this was looking absolutely insane, almost like Tetsuo the Iron Man kind of thing, you know, that crazy body horror vibe. And I merge all of my layers onto one. I then go into filter, into camera raw filter, and I whack the clarity and the texture to 11. I then click image, go into image size, and increase the height of my image from 4961 to 9000 pixels, almost doubling the size of it. So we are going to open filter and go into filter gallery. And what we are going to want to do is have three filter layers on. We're going to have regular grain, enlarged grain and stamp. But all we're gonna do here is really play around with our light dark balance in stamp. What I find is if I put smoothness down to one in stamp and have brightness and darkness quite low around 12, then I can play around with my different grains and see how much contrast and intensity works. The main goal here is to capture as much of that detail that we got with Camera Raw without losing too much of it. You know, we want the Xerox vibe, but we also want as much detail as possible. And I think bringing our image up to 9,000 pixels is really gonna help capture a lot of that. So really you're gonna play it by ear here. It really depends on the image. You know, your image could look a lot different to mine and you will use different values to me. And if you want to know how to do this in much more detail, you can click the link on the top right of your screen for my Xerox tutorial where I go through it in excruciating detail. 
And after all of that crazy photo bashing, texturing and filter galleries, we are finally onto the glamour shots. Hope that was helpful guys. If you've got any questions about anything we covered in the video, please just shout in the comments. I'll be happy to get back to you. Be sure to jump over to Crustbag's channel and check out his videos, they're so sick. And pick up one of those amazing posters from his store right now. Don't forget to give me a like and a subscribe and share it with all your mates if you found it helpful. And don't forget, if you want to try out an Envato Element subscription, you can get 70% off your first month with my link down below. You can also grab my free Spearheads goodie bag with almost 100 assets in it. You can use it in all your projects, both commercial and personal. And if you want to support the channel, you can buy my fonts pack or my assets pack at the link below. Please also feel free to join the Scrap Heap, our community Discord server. There's loads of good legends in there and we have so much fun. You're more than welcome to join us. So cheers guys, big love and best of luck with all of your artwork and peace.